Hello everyone and welcome to another Rapido Trades video. Uh, this time we have not only one but two new wagons for you to see um, and we're going to jump straight in and take a look. The first being the Great Western Iron Mink. Now over 4,000 of these vehicles were built between 1886 and 1901. They had a number of little detail variations during their life. They started off with single-sided brakes, the rules on the railway changed and it required the railway to have brakes on both sides of the wagon vehicle or at least brakes that could be put on and off on both sides of the vehicle. Our tooling is set up to allow for two brake shoes on one side only, two brake shoes on one side and one brake shoe on the opposite side or two and two. So we've got uh, three different versions of brakes that we can do there. They also ended up with different doors and ventilators on the body during their lives. They started off with uh, traditional iron uh, doors with, with framing. They later got vertical wooden planked uh, uh, doors on some examples. Um, and they had both long and short style ventilators on the ends. Some of the vans also got converted to gunpowder traffic. We at Rapido are getting quite good at gunpowder wagons, but we're not gonna blow any of these ones up today. The gunpowder vans got plain iron doors and the end ventilators got plated over. And again, we are going to make sure that we do that. Of those gunpowder vans, interestingly, a hundred of them went on loan to the Southern Railway and actually got lettered up as Southern Region examples. So uh, again, when it comes to artwork, we will make sure that those are all available. Withdrawals started in the 1930s um, and some of them lasted through until the mid 60s. Um, many of them ended up in departmental use as sand vans uh, or stores vans at depots. And some of them even ended up as grounded bodies uh, being used as buffer stops. Their use was fairly widespread across the Western network, but there were even um, examples recorded as far away as Inverness. So again, you haven't got an excuse not to have one. Now, some of you will say, why are you doing Iron Mink? Because Rails of Sheffield have only just uh, released one. Well, the honest answer is, um, we already had this in tooling when we found out that Rails were also producing one. We had invested quite a lot of money in it, and frankly, we couldn't throw the project away. We did, however, give Rails a ring and say we're aware of what's going on and what you're doing. Um, and we did agree to sit on the project for some months um, whilst uh, they did their first run. Um, and then we decided we'll, we'll bring out our run after theirs, which would include all the different doors and bits and pieces that uh, the Rails one didn't feature in the first run. Now, of course, the Great Western Railway were very good at standardisation. So the underframes that we used on the Iron Minx were not just found on the Iron Minx, but were also found on a vast number of four plank open wagons. Um, these open wagons were really quite basic. Um, four planks, dropped side doors in the center, and again had variations in brake. Originally, the brakes were just on one side, but again, they were often found with an additional brake shoe and handle on the opposite side, and our tooling will allow for both versions of this. The wagons were uh, pre the diagram book for the Great Western Railway, but when the, uh, the either side brake regs came in and they were converted, uh, and to give you an idea, over 18,000 of them were converted, and um, they eventually got the number 021. Thankfully, one example, uh, it can be found in complete condition, now owned by the 813 Preservation Fund on the Seven Valley Railway. There are a number of unrestored uh, examples around the country, um, but they are nowhere near complete. And uh, unless you know what you're looking for, they're really quite hard to tell what they used to be. Now, whilst these might be a little bit of a surprise to you, um, for any of you that watch our videos regularly, well, they shouldn't have done. Um, Rapido have got an eye for detail and we wanted to see how much of an eye for detail our customers and our, uh, our viewers had. Um, so we're going a little bit of a flashback now to some of our previous videos where if you'd been looking carefully, you might have already seen them. Fancy a biscuit? I've got one. The order book is open now. Uh, these are available to order um, and the order book will actually close fairly quickly on the 1st of June. The idea is that we want to get them into production as soon as we can uh, and with a fair wind these will be available later this year. You can get hold of them from any official retailer or direct from us at www.rapidotrains.co.uk and don't forget to sign up to our newsletter where you're there where you'll hear the very latest news and developments uh, on these and all our other forthcoming products.